<laughs> hey people, this is the Broken Puppet, back again with another video for you today. This one is how to draw a samurai head, and that is oriental style with a touch of new school flair. So yeah, I'm sure you like it. And that's uh, totally free line work, colouring, shading, yada yada yada, all the stuff you love. So yeah, hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you next time. Right people, how to draw a samurai head. Now this is what I'm going to teach you today. Not exactly this, but pretty much something like this. You know, this one's like an undead version. I'm going to show you like a uh, a life version. Well, not realistic version, just a live version. So yeah, he's not going to be blue. And then, but yeah, this is what I'm going to do. So, let's see done. Right. So yeah, I'm going to start off with the basics. Uh, now for this, you have the basic bit you want to do first is just plotting out the rough face shape. So for this, you just want kind of almost like an oval shape. And that's so just drop a line, come around, kind of like that, okay? And that very faint, just move the light over a little bit so you can see it a bit better. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. And now I'll do the rest in pen, just showing you the basic plot. So yeah. So you basically start with like an oval shape like that. You can have it angled if you want. Now I'm going to have this one slightly angled, so basically by angled, what I mean is where the oval comes is where the chin's going to be. Now I want him facing this way, okay? So what I'm do is have this chin, just like you know the point of the oval, a bit more to this side. And now this basically just turns his head a little bit. If I was him looking that way, I'd have this point more this side. And that, but again this just depends on how your general face shape is. The chin's going to poke out a lot more than you see now, but yeah, it's going to plot some bits, so just like a oval kind of egg shape or a circle, and that just there, that's going to be the chin, and that, quite a big one, it's going to look a bit like a clown at the moment, big sort of circle for the nose, so you know where that's going to go, more of an oval shape, here and here for the eye. Now, if you're a bit stuck for this, like you know, six, uh, one second, I'm doing this the wrong way. Uh, Yeah, I mean. So I was gonna do that. So, so yeah, chin, nose, eye, eye, and now the eye generally is usually about halfway down, you know, the oval shape. And now maybe just a little bit higher for this one, and that's the kind of shape I've done. Now, cause this one I'm adding a hat onto. If I went adding a hat, I'd uh, probably do it a little bit lower. No, but yeah. So you got this bit here, and that's so yeah, just kind of draw like a line going around it. So kind of curve with the shape. And if you want him looking down, curve the shape down and up, like that. If you want him looking upwards, like the faces, like you know him facing upwards, you'll go the other way. No, but yeah. And now from here, just going to do a line, coming up like through the centre of that nose and through the middle of the eyes to the top of the head. Now, that's a guideline for you guys, just to get an idea of the face direction, where it's looking at. And now for the top hat bit, I'm just going to do like this kind of block bit in the front. It's going to be like the front of his hat. A bit kind of square, but having like the bottom side a bit longer. See, like this bit's going about the side of his helmet, and then on the top bit here, the top line shorter, so longer line, shorter line, join them up. Now, get out of here. This one's just going to come out here. Now, if you imagine this square would come back here, but because obviously the face is in front, so you don't necessarily need to carry on your line past here. And that, just like a circle bit for the top for now. You can do like a V here, because that's where we're going to do like a headpiece. No, but yeah, that should cover you know that outline bit for now. And now I recommend you do this in pencil first, but I'm just going to go straight into pen so you guys can see it a lot more clearly. I'm going to start with the nose. And now when I do this, I'm going to do like the main outline bits with a slightly thicker pen compared to what I'm going to do like the rest of it. You know, when I do the fine detail, I'm going to do really thin. And for the bold outline, I'm going to be a bit bolder. Now, this is going to create a sense of depth and that give it a bit more of a unique kind of feel to it. I'll start with my nose and I'm going to bring curve outwards, going up a little bit, coming down, and curving. See, just like that. Just a little shape like that. And I'm going to have this come down to a bigger point in the middle. So, if you imagine like that, that circular shape, you're kind of going with that circular shape. And, that, and I'm going to just harshly. Curve that end down. 
Now, now this is because of the angle he's looking at. You know, so you want this nostril bigger than this one. And then I bring a little line just around the outside of that. I'm going to mimic the shape. So you want that to have the same curve as the nose. You see? And that, I remember, I'm doing this slightly at an angle because I want the face to be facing kind of this way. Now I'm going to do here. And you can join this up or you can not. It's really up to you. This one I'm going to join up. I'm going to start from the curve that we have here. I'm going to curve this up. Curve it in a bit. Okay, that's about there. I'm not going to go much higher than that. And that's just generally like the nose, sort of, you know, bridge shape on that side. Now, for this one, because of the kind of design it is, I'm going to bring in another line on the other side as well. Now, now you got to remember, this isn't realistic, it's stylized. It's like more new school than old school. And that's so a lot of these things you wouldn't normally see on a person. And that, just going to bring in a little bit under nostril just there so just curved up from the line and that's so you basically have the nose bit there and now here at the top well what I'm going to do is bring in a curve now for this one I'm going to do like one of my fancy curves I like to do I curve outwards right and back like that so you see curve like that and then I bring this in it's a big curve touching that nose line and then coming out across this way I'm just going to flick it over there. Now the reason I'm doing this because this is like you know the uh, eyebrow bit. And then now normally the face would end here, but obviously these eyebrows I'm going to have like really big bushy ones. That's what I tend to do with my samurais. Just going to bring a line, just flicking like that, and you're just doing lines with about the same space in between, just slowly working until you get that same curve as the outer line. See, so I'm just doing little ones until I match that same kind of curve. No. And now here, this way can get a bit tricky for people in that because uh, the inside eye is a lot easier than the outside for certain people because we obviously have a certain structure. This one kind of goes outside the structure. Now to do this, and now what I want you to do is reinforce that circle bit, bring a little kind of point on the edge here, right? So if you imagine where the you know your oval bit comes at the bottom bit, draw a straight line, and then a line coming out to the edge, so you get like a point. That's going to be like the inside of your eye. We're going to do more curve, but you basically want that there. And once you have this oval, I want you to do another oval, very faintly, the exact same, just below it, just faint. And I'm going to show you why just in a sec. And that's so what we're going to do, start off with a line up here, curve it round, and just go slightly inside that oval shape, curve down until you come to that point. See, just like that. And then from this point, you want to curve it round up a little bit. And curve that and just follow that oval shape around. Okay. Just along the outline, you see, just like that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a little curve in this little bit. So you see that, that in little it's like by the inside of the eye, just there. And now the reason we've done the other oval shape is because it's going to make a little kind of underlap to the eye. And that just guides us on the kind of shape of it. So I bring in a little curve first, just following this eye shape around just a bit. Just about there. And then I'm going to do a secondary one, a slightly bigger one this time. Just coming around and coming up towards the inner eye a bit. Just like that. Now you don't have to do this, this makes the person look a lot older than what they are. So this is like kind of an older kind of samurai looking face. A bit more detailed. And then what I'm going to do here is follow the nostril line around, right? But exaggerate, go a bit further and a bit longer. And when we get to about here, we're going to curve it and circular it until we join up to that bit. See? So curve here, curve down, curve around, and back. So just like that. And then we've got the cheek. Now, now at this stage, I'm going to put him on the eyes, I think, just like the pupil. Now the pupil, you just generally want... If you imagine just slightly smaller, like a, like a circle, but slightly smaller than you know what the bottom to the top would be. So if you imagine the bottom and the top of the circle, you want it to just kind of just touch the edge almost. You know, imagine that sort of size. Now obviously this one I'm going to have looking at a different direction. So I'm not going to have it dead center. And that, I'm going to put it there. So it's kind of looking this way, looking back. And that. If you want it simple, just do a little white. So you just do another little circle on the inside and just colour black around it. 
and that give you a pupil. And that's it. Very, very simple. And that. Now at this point, just to show an idea what I meant by the depth, what we're going to do is just thicken up this little line as it goes around the edge here. And just thicken up around the bottom of the side, the eyelid. So all you're doing is just making that line a little bit more fatter. See, just like that. And that kind of gives a sense of the eye being inside it, rather than just sitting the same sort of distance. Just picking up that little line just on the outside bit there. So you get a general idea. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom bit of the nose. So as I get towards the bottom of the nose, I'm just thickening up the line, making it a bit bigger. Now you can use the same pen like I'm doing here, or just simply switch up to a slightly thicker pen. You know, either way is perfectly fine. And just around that cheek. Just like that. Now I know at the moment it might look a little bit weird to you on the screen, I'm not too sure how it looks, but you'll get it by the end of the uh, drawing. And that. Now this one, you're going to have the mouth. Now I want you to first off just draw a curve line, right? Just curve them the same as that line we've done through the eye bit here, but lower. And that's so you imagine just about about halfway between this chin circle and your nose. And that and that guide you across the line, you roughly want the mouth. Now the mouth you can do plenty of different ways. And that this one I'm gonna have kind of curving like this. Now I'm gonna give him some kind of crazy lips, I think. Check in my moustache. No, he's always got my moustaches. Yeah, I get my moustache. Yeah. So if you imagine, just bring a little kind of circular shape underneath the nose, just like that. And that gives you an idea of where you want the centre of the lip bit. You see? And because you always get that little indent bit, you know, by the top of your lip. And now from here on the side, I'm going to do a moustache bit. So for this, you just want to similar to the eyebrow. It's going to bring in a nice curved line. Don't bend it up too much. And that, the only time to really bend it up is maybe at the end. But you want to keep the shape fairly smooth and like you know, fairly straight. Don't get too crazy with a bend. And you just do the same thing we've done. Remember the lines here. And that's so I'll go into pen now so you can see properly. I'll bring in the first line. And I'll show you. So it's the first line, you see I'll go further straight and then just put like a little kind of curve bit on the end. And then what I do here is I bring in similar shaped lines, keeping roughly about the same little distance just between them, and just slowly, slowly bringing them back. And that, until I get towards the face and just curve it so you can come back over here, you see? And you can just do the same thing in this little gap here, just a few little lines, just like that. And that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So you see here, just a similar kind of line. Now you can make the moustaches bigger or smaller as you want. I generally go a bit crazy on moustaches. I like them to be nice and big. And I don't know why, I just generally go crazy with facial hair usually. Probably because I have a crazy beard. Who knows? No, your beards just make us crazy. There we go. Yeah, so see we've got that. And then we're going to have the lip underneath it. Now, we sketched the, like I sketched the lip in there, that little line. And that's, so we're going to carry that line through just underneath the moustache. Don't go through the moustache, go underneath it. Come to a slight little point in there, then curve it back. Now that's that, you know, the centre of the mouth line. Now I'm going to put the little lip line, a little, little bit of detail just up here. It's going to kind of curve to a point, come harsh underneath that little curve to a point, curve out towards the edge. See, just like that. And I know at the moment it might look like he's about to smile. You know, you can easily just put a little line here and you can picture him smiling and being happy. I don't want him happy. I want him angry. Now, an easy way to make him angry is to have the bottom lip curved the opposite way around. And that. Now, to do that, like here, I'm just sketching in. So, if you imagine just bringing like this line around here and you want this to kind of sit in a little circular shape going around. So bring a little line here, curve around, up, 
And you want the highest point of this curve to be in the same sort of position as this bit, the center of the face. And, that, and I'm going to curve down like that. And I'm going to have this curve in up over here to where the edge of the mouth is going to be. And, that. and then just mimic that line underneath just a bit wider and a bit bigger. And that will just give you bottom lip shape. See? Simple like that. And you can make this as wide or as thin as you want. And now this one I'm making a little bit wider than I normally do, I guess. And that. You know, these are the things that just build up the character. You know, never turn the same twice. You know, always play around with it. So yeah, it's going to bring this in pen now. Go up, go around, and now. Uh, and you had the bottom lip. So you see, this one's quite a big bottom lip kind of guy. Kind of guy. And then the teeth. Now, the teeth really is up to you, you know. Depends if you want to have a good pair of teeth, you know, is he a nice guy? If you want him to be like the kind of hero kind of person, generally I would say give him a good pair of teeth. If you want him to be bad, give him like some cricket old teeth. And that. Now to do this, just bring in your line across the center. Now because this one's angry, I'm having this line kind of mimicking the bottom lip to a point. And they're never going to come straight out here. And so I basically want the, the bottom teeth to sit a bit more in front of the top ones. Because he's angry, it's like his bottom jaw's eyes are... Right, so we had... Uh, sorry about that. Uh, right, with the teeth... No, sorry, we just sketched out that line now. I want the teeth kind of curving a bit angrily, so they're kind of working with the uh, bottom lip shape. And then now what I want to do is put the teeth in. Let's start with the first middle two, I think. Now this one's a bit mean, so I'm going to do the teeth almost straight. Just a little bit, it's just here and there, just a little bit out of place. No, you can do it perfectly straight if you want, I just find this kind of gives it a bit more character. And makes them seem a little bit more crazy. Now I'll come across here, so that's the bottom teeth done. I can do the top teeth. Now remember, top center teeth are a little bit wider than the bottom ones. And these ones are going behind. Now, I'm not going to do too many across and up here. So I usually do two, maybe another two, and then a tiny little bit on the edge. And that's so. If you imagine just making the box smaller and smaller for the square of the teeth. So the teeth going that way. And now, now what you can do here for the teeth going backwards, you know, I'd prefer to make these ones a bit more sort of kind of block. So I tend to bring a line up here, backwards, and make kind of like, almost like a block shape out of it, and then do like a little wiggly line just there. And then do a couple of these. Not too many. And it just sort of shows the teeth as in going backwards. And that, that's not, not necessarily, you don't have to do that, you can just do the front row right teeth if you want. You don't always have to do the back piece. I'm coming down to the chin, and that's going to bring a little line curving with the lip backwards like this. And that line kind of curving across, just like that. Now that creates the upper part of the chin. Now I'm going to do a little line here because I ain't quite worked out what I'm doing with a beard yet. But you imagine the chin's going to curve around here. That's if I do a beard. I don't know if I'm going to do a beard or not yet. What I might do is a bit of string actually come down from the helmet, tying around these face. Yeah, I think I'll do that actually. Yeah, I'm just making this up as I go along. <laughs> these are the best way to do it with these designs. So what I'm just doing here is just bringing like a curved line towards the bottom of the chin. And then just replicating that line going that way. Just reinforcing that line. So make that kind of chin shape. Now at the bottom is going to do another ball shape here. A bit of fluff. Going back to the block, you know, the rope, and then the rope coming around this way. No. I'm just sketching a pencil because I'm going to sketch this in yet because I have to work out where the rest of the face is going to be. But it's just like an idea what I'm going to do. And now from this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other eye. And now that you sketch this eye, and you can get an idea where you want the other eye. So I want it to be kind of equal. Now, so if you sort of join your line slightly outside the line, reinforce that line. So you get accurate. 
So like here, I'm just sketching from the line and just curving across the face. And this gives me an idea of where I want the center of this eye to be. Now the eye, you want a very similar shape to what you've done before, but this one you want it, instead of curving off, the lines curve up like that, so you kind of flick to an edge, and that, and then bring in your bottom bit, and curve that around there. Kind of like that. So you're just going to put this one in. And, that. and now what you want to do here, you want to get your pencil and you want to sketch in roughly, we know your pencil, where you want the pupil. Because you want it to be quite accurate if you make them look the same way. You can make them look two different ways and make them kind of crazy. You know, it's quite often done like, especially like honey masks and stuff. You know, you get like the crazy eyes. This one I'm going to make him look in the same kind of place. Now because this eye is a bit more front, I'm taking a bit more of a realistic perspective and making the pupil a bit wider than the other one. And I know it looks a little bit out of place, but you'll see as I sort of put the rest in how it is in place. So here I'm just mimicking, well just like you know, reversing this curve for the eyebrow. Bringing this in around here and having this line curve around that eye. And now for this eye, I'm gonna do is gonna bring a line, just copying like the line, you know, the top of the eyelids, but going a bit higher. So kind of exaggerating it again, and that bring that round. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it off and bring a line across the top bit. So what this does, it kind of makes a bit like a squint almost. And that. I think I bring a line underneath, and a line under there. Now I'm gonna pen that in. So you see we've got that line that went up, and I'm going to bring the line across, I'm going to cut that top edge off, kind of like that. Kind of like that. Just got a bit of detail just on the edge of the eye there. Now I'm just going to bring in that eyebrow line. Now you want to be careful how far you take this because you've got, remember you've got the helmet bit that's going to go over that side of the face. So we stop it early, don't go all the way. And now, and now we've got that done, I want to bring in the other side of the cheek. Actually before I did it, should I do that first or should you? Yeah, I'm just going to bring the other side of the cheek and show you this first. And now, you might do some pen because some, I mean, you might want to do some pencil first again. So you get an idea because the cheeks are a big characteristic of these kind of images. It really kind of tells the emotion of the person. And now, now this one, you kind of curve them down. And you want it to curve around. And you want that line to kind of go around that mouth shape. And that like that. And now because of this helmet, imagine a bit of this mask going to get cut off. I'm going to change the shape so I can see a little bit more of the mouth. So I'm just going to have that line come up a little bit shorter that side. And a bit further across that way. Because I, I do like this inside of the mouth detail. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in pen. Stop there. So see, I'm going to make that line. And again, I'm just going to thicken this line up like I've done on the other side. And this just makes the cheek seem like it's sitting above, you know, the under part. And that. Now bring the lips across. I'm just going to bring this across here. Go to a point. I'm just going to come back and flick back out again. And that now. There's no real reason for that, it's just like a bit of mouth detail. You know, you can play around with different shapes here. You know, you just basically want a nice kind of curve shape coming around those lips. You know, so that one's kind of gets makes it a bit more menacing, I think. And that. And now I've got that, I'm going to work down to the chin bit, I think. You know, I've got the rough shape for where I want this helmet to go. So I know where to stop this bottom bit. So I'm going to do like a block, and then I'm going to have like a sort of square bit underneath, almost. And it's going to be kind of, it's like the rope's almost going to be plaited on this, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it like a plait. Now, if you make like a girl's hair kind of plait, you just want the shape to keep going across and then overlapping. Across and overlap. Across and overlap. Until you get to the bottom. Once you get to the bottom, it's going to do like a little kind of curvy shape. And then the centre bit is kind of like a knot you know, over here. Now the knot you can kind of do anywhere, I'm just going to do like a kind of ball shape. And just bringing these like kind of curves coming into it. And now the chin strap, you know the bit of string around the outside. When we've done the yellow line bits. What you want to do first is at about a 45 degree angle. Just draw lines about the same distance apart. Going the whole way through that line. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Now I'll start off with a knot, I'll just put in the detail bit for this. Put in the chin. And then when we've done that line, you want to curve to that point. So one of the, you know, to your first line you're done. And bring the curve, curve around to that. Curve up the line, then curve back to that point. And once you can see the rest of it, you want to curve outwards in a little bit and curve around. So you're creating almost like a backwards S shape with this, but really kind of thin. And you just want to keep repeating that process the whole way up that rope. See, just like that. That line's going to stop there. I can do the same going the other side as well, but I'll do that in a sec. So I'm going to do the plait first. So yeah, I'm just bringing the, uh, the outer edge and making it thicker. And I'm going to do the same thing around the chin. Just on that outer edge and around that lip, just making it thicker. And what this does is makes a clear difference between the foreground and the background. Just go a bit across that bottom bit of the lip as well. Just like that. So you, so you can clearly see that this rope is now behind the face because of that slightly thicker line. You know, it's a small detail, but it makes a world of difference. And now again, with the rope bit here, you just want to draw this line going across this way. And, that, and I'm going to keep it going the same way. So I'm going to do the line. If you actually curved around, it's going the lines across going the other way. And that. That's it going that way. No, no, I'll do it the other way actually. I mean, it's really your choice in that, you can have it sort of going that way. I'm going to keep it so the rope's going the same direction actually. You know, it's really just a matter of choice. You know, there's no right and wrong way with it, just do it with your waist, kind of takes your fancy at that time. So you see, I'm just repeating that S shape. If you struggle with this, just let me know, and I can always do like a separate tutorial on how to do like you know old school kind of rope and Japanese kind of rope. You know, it's a big part in kind of tattoo designs. It's used a lot. And now here, I'm just going to bring a little part of the bottom chin, just quite a curve to give a sense of the direction of it. See here, and that now looks a bit weird, but when I sort of shade it in, you'll understand. You know, it's not cut it off. This is going to be like a shadow bit. So if you imagine the under part of the chin. You see what I mean? 
Shimpo. Now, a few little detail bits just around here. Just making a line around that mouth bit. You know, there's loads of little detail bits you can put here and there. You know, I'm going to go with a fine line after this and sort of like just put in a bunch of little random little bits that look good. Just bring this eyebrow. Same thing we've done the other side. Just bring the line up and then little lines. And that's it for the face. Now we go on to the helmet. Now for the helmet, I'm going to do the kind of style that I like, generally like to do. So start from the top. I'm going to bring this line down here. All the way down. I'm going to have the moustache going just slightly over the front of it. And you can always have something overlapping. Then bring this line all the way back up to the top. See, just like that. Now, so imagine it's like almost like a big sort of like long triangle. Now, once you get to this bottom bit, I'm just going to bring this out across a bit. I'm going to stop there for now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a little bit of fire detail behind it. And now, fire detail can be done so many different ways. You know, I'm a big fan of you know the uh, older school kind of way of doing it. So I'm just going to bring a curve here. Curve going back up to a point like there. I'm just going to bring this back to that point. Just make some curves and just keep playing around the shape until you get like a kind of shape you like, you know. But just keep the the, sh the curves nice and neat. Don't go too crazy with too many curves. You know, I think that's the trouble a lot of people do. They try to go too crazy with it. Let's come in here. Just come around the outside here, I think. So yeah, just something like that, I think. That'll do. Not too much fire, just a little bit. Just going to go to the pen. So as you can see, it's just a lot of like nice, kind of long curves. Nothing too harsh, no too like sudden turns. It's really kind of smooth. And now and then again, just stop at a point and make it a separate bit of flame. See, just like that. See, you mentioned this curve went across there, and I just cut it and put a little bit of extra flame. You can also do is you can also put in like little kind of fire gaps. So you imagine like just like a circle so shape to a point. And imagine that bit would be empty. And I'm going to carry this line around from the helmet to the back. And I'm going to stop it there because I want to have some nice kind of curves here. And that, now a lot of time you have like plates, you know, like layered down in different kind of patterns on these helmets. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's a simple technique, but I like this one. Bring like a little semicircle bit. Same circle bit. No, I don't want to go down to three. Well, I want this one overlapping. I'm going to have this one coming off as separate a little bit, so I'm going to bring it down to here, and it's not going to quite join up. And this one's going to be similar to this bit, just there. And then again, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to curve this, going outwards, curve here, going outwards. this line out to the edge and make that curve again you can bring that line here it's going to flick it in a moment so I not put the detail bit in yet and imagine that bit's going to go underneath now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to keep copying this line shape just curving down all the way across Keep the distance about the same. Yeah. 
looking at it now, and this bit I'll do is I'm going to have like, just imagine it's like a kind of plate bit. So I'm going to have this coming out a little bit. Coming up here. I'm going to have like a, yeah, like a square piece here. Coming up. And I'm going to have like you know, that same kind of rope effect. Just coming through here, I think. If you imagine it's kind of tying that down to the helmet. It's called a bit of armour. And then what I might do is I might put a little bit more detail on the top of that. On the side in a minute. You know, just do what I do. Just play around with it, you know. If you get an idea you think, oh, that might be good, do it. Doesn't matter if it comes up, you know, bad or nothing, you know, it's... Comes out bad, you know, not to do it again. Comes out good, you know, you're onto something. Never be afraid to try new ideas. And like I say, I'm just repeating this pattern. Cross. Just make sure you size it right so you can fit that last one and it still looks okay. that's that kind of bottom plate of it and on the other side you won't see too much of that because all the armor stuff is on the inside so we just do that kind of try and get a shape I'm just gonna have this line coming inwards a little bit of fire underneath and come out that's up See, sometimes fire can just be a matter of a few straight lines. It doesn't have to be always bent. And that's showing you a different way of doing it. Yeah. A bit of line for that. Now we come onto the front bit of the helmet. Now again, you can do this many different ways. I'm going to teach you a nice cool way of doing it. Let's bring in a curve. Come up a little bit. Move that line. I think there's like a metal bar just across the top of the helmet. Now then hit. This one kind of curving like this a bit. I'm going to curve this one around again. Now this one's going to go all the way around to the back of the helmet. You can take your time with this, you know, I'm just doing this quickly so I can show you. you now if I was doing it normally I'd probably straighten out a bit so it comes out perfect, but I'm just plotting it in quick. You know, don't be, don't expect to be able to draw a thing as quick as I do sometimes, you know. I know I'm pretty quick at drawing these things. You know, if you need to pull, stop, take your time with it. Doesn't matter if it takes you 10 minutes or if it takes you 10 hours. It's all about the end result. And it's all about enjoying it. As you can see, I'm going to put a little bit here. 
I'm just going to separate it from a bit. So imagine like this nice front kind of cap of his helmet. And that. And then he always tend, he always tend to get like a headpiece on these helmets. And that usually like in a kind of horn shape. So I'm going to have kind of come like this. Fairly simple this one. So imagine I'm coming up to a point here, bring it in and just kind of curve it down the middle. I'm going to mimic it, reverse it the other way. You'll see when I plot it in pencil a lot easier. You know, it's probably a bit faint because of the light at the moment. No. So yeah, here we go, just got to plot this in now. Yeah, you can see, it's like a cool little headpiece, and that it makes sense why you put a bit of background in the helmet. And I, like I tend to do like a skull or something in this little space here. You know, that's usually one of my signatures, or like a lion's head, or a dragon or something. So yeah, I'm gonna quit like a little kind of dragon's head. You know, this one's quite simple, and that so. Almost like a human nose, so like a little flick like that. Underneath it, you just want to bring out a flick. Just bring out about four flicks around it. So yeah, so you got the nose, and you got a little moustache on the dragon. Just bring in like a big sort of canine. One, two, three, four little buns for the teeth, and then another one on the edge. Now. Now the eye bit, I'm just going to bring in like a curve, flick, and a curve. So you see it's like a, almost like an S-shape, then just bring that curve around so it joins up. Do the same on the other side. Just do some little spiky bits around the edge to make like an eyebrow. Two bumps, little line in the middle, and, that, and then bring in two horns. Horns you can kind of go crazy with. I'm just going to do a simple curve, flick, and then a big line there. So you just break off a little bit and then like a long piece. So on the other side, I'm not going to do the bottom jaw, I'm just going to do like a little kind of a dual thing to go here. Two two little ears. And it's gonna make like a ring going around the top bit. Just kinda of like that. Nothing major, it's just like a little kind of decoration bit. And now time for the helmet piece. Show you an idea what to do. So you've got this cat bit, so you basically want like a bowl and a shape on the head. Kind of like that. And work out roughly like, you know, through the heads where the center piece is. You know, it's not going to be dead straight at the top. It's going to fit like the way his head goes. So we curve up here. And then we just want to do like a little kind of circular shape there. Then on top, because you want it to be, you don't want to be like a dead circle, you want it to be kind of long. So it looks realistic the way it fits in there. A little one on top of that. And I'm just going to do like a spike on the top of that. I'm going to decorate that with just some like little sort of uh, circles around it. And that. And then I'm just going to break up. Just bring like little kind of strips, like two lines. And that, and just. Building them up around it. You know, so it's almost like making like a kind of like a strap sort of thing. 
and then one that going across the other way there and one there so you're just following the shape of the bowl you know just keep this curve going so you get the right shape of it and then on each piece of this I'm just going to do like a sort of ball bit in the middle of each bit where the strap joins you'll see now I put the pen in you know a lot more clearly and that's so I'm going to make a bolt to a little strap bit bolt to a little strap bit bolt and then I'm just going to do these circle bits and then I'm going to just join these up with those little strap bits so it's almost creating sort of like a kind of net thing on the head it's kind of holding the material the uh, bowl head bit in place shape bull shape So you see you're building up like a little square that's just around the edge. And now here, because we've got like you know sort of the rim of the uh, it's kind of ball kind of pearl shapes, you just want to do a circle in the middle, and I always start with the middle, otherwise you know you're not gonna get even. And then just keep attaching circle shapes around the edge until you make set circles that kind of make that shape, that curve, you know, the same shape as the bowl. Like the strip around it. So you see, you've got a nice little line there with them. And that. Let's bring out your first one, curve it up, bring that line around again to the end. Bring a second kind of ring. So you're basically making like um like little donut kind of rings around it. And then bring your spike in the middle. Like that. Now that one's only a simple spike, you know, you can make it more complicated than that, but I quite like that. And now what I'm doing is going to thicken up certain lines around the edge. And then I'm going to have a few little detail lines and then I'm going to colour it in. You basically want to use your line depth as a way of showing different parts of the picture as being in front or behind. You know. And I generally like to use the thicker line to sort of show things that are in front. You know, and just create a sense of depth with it. You're surprised just how much difference a bunch of different lightweights can make in a picture. And by line weight, I literally mean just different thicknesses. You know, if you want to make it really, really old school, then just keep with the same kind of thickness. And uh, you know, that's one of the big difference between old school and new school designs. You know, old school always tends to be like the same width line for everything. You know, it's not always the case, but nine times out of ten it is. Old, oh, like new school, there's a lot more variety to it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so you can see we've got that basic bit. And now we've got this time, I'm just going to throw in some kind of hair bits. And now the hair's literally just straight lines flicking out. And I'm going to keep these very, very close together. So there's literally just like a tiny little gap between each one. So you have a little bit of hair coming on that side, and I'm just going to have some hair flicking on this side too. A little bit there, and maybe just a little bit at the top here. It's really up to you, just play around with it until you feel the right amount. 
Now I'm just going to rub out my pencil line work. As you see, we no longer need that now. And that. I mean, with this paper, you know, the pen gets all pretty quick, but if you're worried about sort of smudging your line work, sometimes the pen smudges quite easy. And now just let it dry for a sort of like, you know, 10, 20 minutes or so, depending on what kind of paper and pen you're using. No, but I always recommend trying to get like a good sort of sketchbook. And I ain't got nothing overly fancy, just fairly thick paper. You know, is usually enough to do the trick. Now, now I'm going to switch up to a very thin liner. And I'm just going to put in some little detail bits, just little lines, just to bring out certain bits. And now these are quite hard to explain. You just generally have to try and feel the shapes. Now, like here, you know that cheat got a curve, so just curve. Just going to follow this. Just there, you know. Might branch it off into a secondary line. Little curve here around the eyes. Going to bring a few little lines. Right. So eyebrow. Yeah, it's literally just trying to feel where you think a line would suit. And always do these ones with like a thin outline. And uh, it just makes it fit in better and just works better, I find. And uh, if you're trying to do the detail bits with too much of a thick liner, it just tends to fail a lot. You know, and you end up doing a line you don't like. If you're worried about messing it up, you can always like sketch it in pencil, you know, in pen first. I mean, pencil first. See what you think. The lips here, I'm just going to do some nice curve lines, just to kind of show that shape. You know, and just make it a bit obvious that this lip is round. You know, just like that. It's just simple, I mean, this is what I mean by it's not realistic because in real life you wouldn't have these kind of lines. You know, you just add a bit of style to it. You know, like the right bit here, I'm just going to... A few little flicks here and there, make it look like the rose a bit... Kind of fluffy. It's gonna kind of shine, so I'm just gonna put some kind of highlight lines. Just a couple up here. So I'm just working with the shapes I've got, you know, when I sort of want to go and exaggerate a point, you know, let sort of people realise the direction something's going in. And sometimes these lines are good if you're trying to break up like shade colours. Like if you wanted to use bold colours to shade rather than like, you know, blends. You know, you can do that. You can create cool kind of shadow effects. You know, like here. I could do this bit grey and this bit like a really dark grey and go dead up to the line. And you still get a sense of shading. But, yeah, I'm just going to add out a few little dots here and there. I quite like doing little clusters of three dots. You know, one big, two small. And just kind of scatter them over the place. Now skin isn't perfect, especially on like men. You know, you don't on women sometimes the spots can ruin it a little bit, but as long as you put them in the right locations, just play around it until you feel you're going to work way of it. That's one line I want to thicken up here. You're always gonna see ones you want to thicken up like this bit around the eye. Want that to be thicker. There we go. And so the mouse is going to be black, so I'm just going to black that up. Just like that.
Right. Now we've done that, time to put some shading. And that now again you can use like paints, you can use pencils. And now I'm a big fan of using markers. And I was gonna be using a mix of flex markers and trier markers. You can find the links for these in the uh, comments, in the uh, description and stuff. And that they can be a little bit pricey in that, but they're well worth it. So yeah, you know, if you want to get them, you know, check them out. All right. Now to start with, I'm just going to put in some bold black in some places. Okay, just chin, but I want this to be bold black. You know, don't be afraid of pure black as well. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a picture and it's just like it's been so good, but just let down because person's just scared to go too dark with shading. And that. You know, if you're really, really worried about, you know, and you want to use markers, but you're just scared, you know, about ruining your picture, just try adding like a. Let's a little feature. I'm gonna make a little crack in this bit. Yeah. Another little tip with markers as well. Now, if you want to use them, be quick with them. You now, you hang around on the wrong kind of paper, it can bleed a lot, and you don't want that. Now the eyebrows in the moustache I'm going to black out and, now, and when we get to the lines I literally just flick the pen so you get this kind of brushy kind of feel towards the tip and that kind of expresses the uh, lines that's why we kind of get lines close together it's a really cool look to it but you see there you see you get black and it kind of fades out into the lines Look at those lines. Your moustache blacked out there. Just flipping a little bit more of this hair just down here. Just there. Now normally I'd add like sort of shadows and stuff, you know, like you know, thick bold ones, but this one I'm kind of kind of try and blend it out, do it with grey. So I'm gonna keep it a bit more lighter than my usual ones. No. If you find your kind of lines do bleed a little bit, just go around the edge and pen. You know, if you want it to be solid still. Like there. Easy correction. And that now I need to get my colours. Where's my colours? What is this? Blender. Yeah, that'll do for now. And that's going to start with like a basic kind of very light flesh tone. If you're worried about colour and you're not used to it, you know, always just start with your lighter colour first, you know, and just build it up. And once you've done it, just look at it and just think to yourself, hmm, would this be better with more colour or less? In which case, you just kind of knock your shading up a level, you know. Like here, well, I'm using this light flesh tone, once I do the rest of it, it's going to look at it and I'm going to think, oh, in key areas, it just needs to be a bit darker. So I'm going to go in with a darker shade. Literally just flicking it out in places, and then just 
working in like little shapes like you see like I said like with the lines in there like under here you know just working up here and leaving white in the middle bits and I'm just trying to build up a little bit of shape for the colour now nothing too drastic just yet now normally I'll just go in a strong colour but I'm just trying to show you how you can do it so yeah so I'll put a little bit of basic like face colouring in there Find me other skin color. Oh. Go with my next door seconds. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, this one's done. Down on to there. One more color. Ah, here we are. Let me run on some. It's like the case you get trim markers in if you get the big packs. And that, it's a pretty decent sized pack and the good thing is and that what a lot of colours are well, they expensive initially, but you can get like cheap refills from certain websites. Like Jackson Art and stuff. You know, there's a link to one of them on my page I think. Yeah, feel free to check it out. Bit of colours of lake. There we go. So yeah, we'll add in a flesh stone. See, now it's going to flick in a dark, a slightly darker one. I'm going to try and work in colours at the same time with this. Yeah. And because uh, with trio markers and flex markers, you see they're good for blending that, but they stay wet for a little while. But you've got to be pretty quick on them sometimes. I mean, you can spend a while and sort of work them out afterwards. But if you just want to get a good quick blend, you know, just use two at the same time sometimes. It comes in quite handy. So you can just kind of brush them into each other. I'm just going to make a few kind of solid bits with this kind of brownie skin tone. And now, now what this is doing, this is just creating those shadows. Now normally I do these shadows in black. But I'm just showing you, you don't always have to use black. For shading. So see I'm just putting it in the dark and I'm just flicking it out with the colour. Go in the dark, go over the light and just blend it out. You know, it's very similar to water painting. In that, you know, you just put in like you know your dark shade and then you just kind of wet your brush and go over it. It's literally the same principle really with this. Now I'm literally just putting it in dark and then going over with a wetter lighter colour and just blending it out.
ones, you're just building this up a little bit by bit. And you can slowly see now by bringing out these little corners and stuff, you just start to make the face have a little bit of sense of 3D-ness. Now nothing too drastic because it's like new school, it's not realistic. I don't want to go too over the top with it. I do want to have a little bit of 3D-ness with this. It's just shaping up quite nicely now. That's it, like, as you can see, I'm just building this up a little bit, a bit by little bit. Now that's what you want to do, you know, like start off with light and you feel like it's dark and just look it, take up a notch. So you see, that's like the skin tone bit done. And then you can kind of make choices on certain other bits and that, like the lips and that. You know what I mean? Like on a girl, like sometimes the lips can be red, and sometimes on a guy it can be. And then this one, this kind of guy, I'm going to change it. I'm just giving some like really kind of dark brownish lips. Oh, and this pen is running out. I need to refill that soon. Switch. Right. What I'm doing here, just putting in like you know that kind of Tone and did I find what is it? And a slightly more fleshy dawn. There we go. This one's a bit more pink, and I'm just going to put this pink over the top. This one's kind of angry. I'm going to give a little bit of detail on his teeth now. I'm going to use almost like a kind of yellowish kind of tone. No, but it's very, this one's very, very faint, so it's kind of creamy at the same time. It says angry face, so I don't want it to be too pretty. Some red in this little bit in the eye. I always tend to do. And now one thing a lot of people don't do, which I like to do, and that's in the actual eye itself, is put a little bit of shadow. Now the eye is not completely white, you know, I mean it's on the outside, but when the shadow hits it, it's gonna be grey. So you want a little bit of grey, so you split grey in from like one side. Look into it, it feels about right. Don't cover the entire eye, just little bits of it. 
And I'm gonna do what I've done on the other design. I'm gonna do some like you know blood drips. And that's so some bleeding eyes and some bit of blood from around the mouth, I think. And I quite like doing this. And it's literally just bringing a line of reds around the eyes. Now I know this red's a bit brighter than like realistic blood, but I don't know, for some reason in this kind of style I really love it when it's bright red. Because most real blood is generally more like a dark kind of purpley brown colour. So some blood around the teeth. Just gonna put like a line around the bottom top of the teeth. I'm gonna put some kind of dots and little flicky bits just around the edge. Crazy. I'm gonna check around the mouth. Samurai's been in a bad fight. No, yeah, quite a little story with it. Little dots here and there. Don't go too crazy with it, you know, you just want enough to make him look gruesome. Once you cut to a point where you think, yeah, it looks pretty cool, just stop there. You get much further, chance are you're probably gonna go too far with blood. Blood's one of those ones where it's really easy to carry away with. Because one second it looks really awesome, you're like, yeah, 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 and then you're like, no, nah, went too far. So yeah, it's so flicking like a dark ground this bit. You know, this bit's like a metal. You know, it's like a metal frame. And it's like wood cover on the top. So you're going to do that there. Hush broon. I'm looking at this really strong brown on the inside bit. I might do some lines here to make it look like wood. And then, and then put this bit only on this first curve. And then what this does is shows the bump. How that, bit, how that bit kind of bumps outwards. Right. Exactly going that little background bit. Down each one of these little lines down the middle. A little underwards bit. Sneeze. Sneeze, sneeze. No, hold it. Now, this bit right here, you know, holding the thing down is going to make reds. They can make it a different colour you want. Try to add a few colours in there, you know what I mean? Because, like, here I'm choosing flesh tones and reds at the moment. But I'm going to add, like, a bit of orange, maybe a bit of yellow, or a bit of green or something. You know, add a few colours to spice it up. Don't stick with just the same colours. And that. But then again, don't add too many colours. Too many colours can equally damage a picture just as bad as too few colours. So you have some orange flames. Now I don't necessarily feel the fire has to be red. And to be honest I prefer my fire to be orange. And I don't know why I just love the orange fire. It looks so cool. I'm just colouring this bit bold. What also looks really cool as well, and that's um, if you've done the outline of the fire in like orange as well, so it's just like a complete solid orange with like no black outline, and that, that always looks really cool as well. And that, you can create little fire dots and stuff as well, and little pattern bits, and that, but for this one, I just want this solid. And that. You know, sometimes just a basic solid colour can be just as effective as crazy little details. And 
And I think a lot of the best new school kind of tattooists are generally ones that learn how to simplify the best. You know, I hate the word simplify, but sometimes, especially with tattoos and tattoo designs like you know this sort of style, you know, getting too complicated can ruin them sometimes. Sometimes it's worth getting complicated. I was not. A big green. Is this the kind of green I want? Yeah. And this Vince's helmet here. Might also do a little pattern in this bit of his helmet. You see how I'm just flicking in towards that middle and just letting the white of the paper create a shine. And that. You know, I want it to kind of. Again, it's like, sort of almost like 3D-ness. And that. I'm going to colour in all these square bits up here green. And then I'm going to go over them with like a harsher green. Green helmet. Never thought of this before. That actually looks pretty cool. Don't know why, but I always tend to do my helmets like in silver or in like a... Um, I mean, I've got like a lilac kind of colour. And for uh, some reason I feel like lilac really does work. And I've missed a few little line bits in here. I'll just colour around where they should be. And put the lines in afterwards. Yeah. Don't panic if you missed out a line here and there, you know, you just add that in afterwards. Yeah, let's get a darker green. You remember those little bits we've done the bottom? I'm just going to colour them in dark green. And then add a few little detail bits with the dark green. This man is a soldier of shoe. Works for Lube. Dynasty Warriors. So I'm just talking myself here. Join, join, join. Line, line. Line. A bit more red around here. I'm just going to put red in these two strips. Actually, I might do one of these black. I think black would be cool for one of these. Call in these little red ball bits in red. So these ones I'm still like a little white dot in them. It's got like a cool little shine effect. Like there, like that. I'm gonna hit this up with that brown again. And those strips. I like that brown. I think this design's cool enough for a touch of baby blue somewhere though. You know, I always try to think when you're looking at a picture, you know, what colour would look really good with this? Where's my blue? Where the hell is my blue go? Look 
blues are really good color for getting like metal effects you know don't always feel you have to be like grazed to get metal effects blue can do just a good job just working the dark gray over the top side a bit yellow if you have red and orange I always recommend putting yellow in somewhere and that and it just creates like a um, it's almost like an illusion to the eye because obviously you know yellow orange to red it's kind of like, you know, the colour mix. It just brings it out and just shows off a lot of, you know, I don't know why, it's just always pretty cool to do it. And this piece I'm just working in the orange into the yellow. Now sometimes with these colours it takes a little bit of work in, like orange to yellow, I think it'd be a straight up mix, but because my yellow is going to be dry, it's not as easy. So I'm just just chucking the orange in some locations, not too many. I'm just working it up. Use butter. When the phone rings, it must be answered. So, do, 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 do. some yellow. I need to refill this yellow. It is slowly running out of me. Mm, should do the job. Should just be finish this off with it. Golden spike as well, I think. Tip to the wise, bit of orange and a bit of yellow, and you have gold. Sometimes it's cool to throw a little bit of brown there as well. Back to the grey. Throwing grey. Which colours are I using again? Nope. So another one. No, what bloody graves are you using? Ah, that's great, I did a trick. ball in the middle open the dragon's eyes made a dragon's head a bit golden I think I will 
tita. ¿Quién no es con... That's the guy I was using. Message, message, message. Just need to flick in some of that dark green in this helmet, I think. a bit more right. now. now I'm just gonna like a blend here with my brown there is not very right out These pins do last a while, I just use them a hell of a lot. So just straight starting with, I just put in a dark bit just across the bottom. And that and then get in. Losing my colours. There you go. Slightly lighter brown. And here comes the twist. Yellow. Work over the whole thing. Blue. And now, I don't often do ropes in blue, but I think this rope is just calling out to be blue. Nice baby blue. I'm just, just copying the shape and just leaving a little white section in the same place on each bit of rope. And voila! It's coloured in. No, no, I'll just do a few little sing chips out of the me black. Don't ask me why, I'm just a big fan of doing black dots around my work. gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages there you have it how to draw a samurai head and I hope you like it and that uh, yeah if you do subscribe comment below tell me what you'd like to see next and that I am dedicating a lot of time now to doing these videos so there will be a lot more coming up I intend to a whole bunch and schedule them ahead of time so I won't be doing week by week but it will be coming out week by week 
if it catch me drift. So yeah, that way I can just keep them coming for you guys. So there'll always be something coming. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I am the Broken Puppet, and I will see you next time. Peace out.